Good morning, Joan. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Thank you, Arrow. Oh, my God. I'm finally blessed with the opportunity to not just talk to an author, but a writer. And you say it right here in this book. I love writing. That means so much to my soul. Oh, that's so sweet of you, because um, that was one of my favorite things to do when I was at school. And um, although I, you know, I went to so many different schools, I was always the top of my class in writing, English, composition, uh, grammar, all of the things to do with writing. And, um, you know, I edited uh, my uh, fourth form um, magazine. Uh, fourth form, I guess that would be fifth grade, fourth grade, I'm not sure. And um, I started writing stories and compositions when I was very young. Wow. Like because that's what we used to do as children. We <laughs> didn't right. have we didn't have phones and televisions. We used to amuse ourselves. And my sister used to write stories as well, and I used to ir- illustrate them for her. Wow. I was blessed with the opportunity to to spend some time with Jackie and and the, the two of you, I mean just I, I just can't imagine what it would be like to sit down in a living room or just a writing room and just let your imaginations just take off. Well, my sister and I spent many, 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 many thousands of happy hours and days together. And uh, we were very much um, on each, you know, we had the same blood group, obviously. We were very much in each other's pockets when we were children and later on. And even today, I'll, something will happen and I think, oh my God, I must call Jackie or I must tell Jackie. <laughs> and I realize no, there is no Jackie. There is no replacement for her. I have a lot of girlfriends, uh, close girlfriends, but there's nobody as... There's nobody that comes yep. close to being as close as Jackie yeah. was. I feel the same way about my sister because we would talk every day at one twenty in the afternoon. And sure enough, my eye hits that clock at one twenty. I'm going, ah, uh-uh. ah, well, she's not there. So therefore, it's like, okay, in uh, spirit, she is. And it's like, it's one of those things where you just carry that energy forward. I know. You do miss them. Yeah. You really do. I mean, you know, you think that grief will pass. And, it's, you know, that very heavy grief does pass but you can never forget all the moments and she was a prolific um, photographer and so was my mother and so was I so we have so many memories so many photographs and albums and videos to look back on which is what I'm going to do when uh, we meet with my daughter Tara this coming weekend we're going to go through albums and we're going to look at videos and you know, just reminisce about all the times that we had with our loved ones together. And I think today, with everybody just taking pictures on their phones, you don't have that. Nope. You don't keep those pictures. You you lose your phone, you lost the pictures. Sorry, buddy. Mm. It's See, too bad. And that's why it's so important to, to release a book like what you've got here, Behind the Shoulder Pads, because we've all, always had just what they put in those ma- magazines at the grocery store. But with this right here, we get to really get to know you. And and these are stories that your friends have always heard, but now we get to hear them as well. Uh, well, I think so, yes, because some of them have never been told before. I mean, this story, for example, about when I'm in Hong Kong and my best friend and I get on a little um, boat, a Chinese junk, to go out for a pleasure trip, but we get caught in a terrible storm mm-hmm. and the um, the engines break down and we're towed out to the South China Sea, it's the most deadly sea in the world. And, I mean, I've never told that story before, but it's, uh, you know, quite interesting and the story about Princess Margaret coming to my house for Christmas dinner, uninvited, um, coming with some other friends and um, wanting to um, have a special kind of whiskey, which luckily I had. It was called um, (laughs) Famous Grouse and I had it. And meeting the queen at Buckingham Palace and asking her what she was drinking. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> that was very rude of me because she was she had a glass and it had um, clear liquid in and I wanted to know if it was gin, vodka or water. <laughs> so I, I I was just about to ask her and then, you know, I, I, I said, ma'am, what is an, an equerry gave me a look and realized you don't ask questions of the royal family. 
you you talk but you don't ask them anything they ask you so i never did find out whether it was gin vodka or water in the queen's glass i had put a picture of her on my instagram i'm on instagram um if you want are you on instagram yes i am i am oh well then you should follow me and i'll follow you <laughs> i'm on um john collins dbe it gives us that opportunity to to find um, to what what you're experiencing these days because i believe that when you write a book like behind the shoulder pads you're relinquishing a, a part of your life but now you're open to receive new life so to go to your instagram now i'm gonna go oh my god this is absolutely fantastic yes. I know it is. <laughs> well, I do it really to keep in touch with my friends and um I and and you know acquaintances and I find it fascinating. Um I don't do Google. Uh, I don't do TikTok. I don't no. do X or whatever it's called anymore because <laughs> I don't like it. I just do Instagram because I think it's kind of very sweet. Yeah. And people don't write nasty things. Well, certainly I don't see them. Yeah, yeah. Just looking at the pictures because, you know, we, we always look at pictures and, and our imaginations, you know, create the story for us. And that's what's fun is just to look at people's videos or even pictures. I would would have loved yeah. to have seen a picture of you and Errol Flynn because that in my childhood, he was my hero. He was my Superman. Oh, well, that's interesting. I met him very briefly when I and I haven't written about that in a book because it was so long ago, uh, and he, um, it was at a party at, at Arthur's house, and he was kneeling on the floor, <laughs> talking to somebody and barking like a dog. <laughs> I, I never forget because I was very young; I was only twenty, and I thought, my God, that's Errol Flynn. Is why is he barking like a dog? But he was doing his act, I guess. They thought it was amusing. <laughs> but, um, you know, most actors, we are a bit um, weird. Yep. You know, you have to be a bit weird to want to become an actor, you know, to take on the persona of another person, which is what being an actor is, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, know, you always, I mean, I am not Alexis Carrington by any means. <laughs> I am not, you know, the saintly missionary worker from Star Trek either. I am, you know, what I am is Joan Collins, and I try to inhabit those roles. When along the line did you realize that I am Joan? Because, I mean, as a radio personality with a fake radio name, there are many times I have to sit down and say, you're not Arrow right now, you are somebody else. Now, you need to act who you are and not what he does. Oh, well, um, I don't think I ever consciously did think that. Um I just always knew that what I was doing was inhabiting a person and becoming yeah. that person while I was saying the lines that were, had been given to me by the writer. Uh, and I think that the, the best example I can give you of that is playing Alexis yeah. in Dynasty because I I think I did it so well <laughs> that people believed that, yep. that that was me and still do <laughs> strangely enough you know i'll go into a store or a movie house or something and say, oh alexis yes yeah you're still here <laughs> mm. I, I love the way that you open the book at, at the birth and, and and because it really does help people understand the connection that that you have with your sister the, the, it, it's it was the perfect place to begin the book Yes. Well, thank you. Yes. Um, well, I, you know, you you never know. I mean, have you written books? Yes, I've got seven of them. Have you? Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, I was. I, I wanted. I wanted to have a book of poetry, but it, I ended up telling stories. In fact, my last book is written about John Lennon in the end, but it's fifty-three pieces of poetry that happen to tell a story. And of course, if you don't read oh poetry, God, that's had a, oh, that's had a lot of publicity in England. Really, you wrote that. I yeah I wrote a book yeah and it, and it was very fun to put together because I thought that if John Lennon were to to be alive today I I would like to know how he would write and and it's and so and and that okay. it was just very fun to do it and of all things I got to talk with Julian and Yoko along the journey. Oh how fabulous! Yeah, my God, was this this was recent, wasn't it? Uh, probably about three four years ago. Yeah. 
Ah, yeah, because my daughter, Tara, is a poet. She um, puts a lot of her poetry on Instagram. And I was going to try and buy that book for her as one of the Christmas presents. But now that I've met you, <laughs> I will do that. So now, when, when it comes to writing, I mean, you know that we disappear from the world when we go onto the page. How, how do you make, your, make it available for you to come back into the reality? Because, I mean, I, I've read your books. I know where you, where you put my imagination. But then it's like, how did she get back to being just Joan? <gasps> Gosh, that's a difficult question to answer. I, I I don't know because I don't have a specific way of writing. I yeah. I don't do it on a, a device. I I write with a pencil. Absolutely. Uh, on the, um, uh, yeah. So I can write sitting on the bed, sitting at my desk, sitting on the floor, sitting in the car, when the when it strikes me. And of course, behind the shoulder pads doesn't have the narrative as as such mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i don't have to um, concentrate that hard i mean it's i do concentrate because i had to bring up from my memory a lot of these stories some of which happened 30 40 50 years ago and uh, that can be tough but it's amazing if you unlock that little bridge that sits in your head that, ha that carries the, all all of the experiences that you've had in your life and it's there you just have to trigger what it is yeah. and it will open up and give you those give you those that information would you say that your acting career is really your writing voice that writer is at home you're putting those words on the page but then now you've got to go have a real voice so i mean in, in when you when you would show up on the set was that just the writer and you going hmm let's let's bring this together no, I don't think so at all. Mm. Uh, when I went on the set, all I was thinking of was the being, the the, the being Alexis or the being yeah. Sarah or Amanda or Laura, whatever character I was playing. Yeah, no, I I didn't um, I, I didn't attach the two to each other at all. One of the things that I've noticed about your writing is that th there's really amazing flow to it. Are you listening to music while you're writing? Because I, I, I always want to get into the rhythm of, of, of the, the voice of the writer. Yes, I am, strangely enough. I usually do try to have music on. Yeah. Um, kind of eclectic, really. Um, modern music, by which I mean Ella Fitzgerald, yes. um, singer, um, Frank Sinatra. I mean, when I was writing um, the chapter Acapulco Adventures, I started it off with, uh, come fly with me, <laughs> let's float down to Peru, or let's float down to Brazil, whatever I can do without having to uh, pay the writer the um, what you have to pay them if you quote them. Yeah. Um, so I do, and I, I like to listen to jazz. I like to listen to um, Humphrey Littleton, Sidney Bechet, Claude Luther, um, those kind of jazz uh, players from the 20s, 30s, oh. 40s, and Harry James. Oh, yes. Um, 40s. Yeah, those kind of thing. And 80s music, of course, I love. I have to admit, I do not like modern music yeah. at all. Right, right. I'm with it you. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't get me. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on Behind the Shoulder Pads. I look forward to sharing another conversation with you many, many, many more times in the future. Oh, that's so sweet of you. When I do my 20th book, All right. I think I'm going to call it, I don't know how I do it. <laughs> that's a good title. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Yes, thank you very much. This was enjoyable. Thank you so and much. And happy Christmas. Same to you.